Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectual stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and evil scientist, meteorologist at DT from weatherist.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about this week in weather as of November 12th on this uh, Sunday at 10 p.m. A couple different topics to talk about. First, does the cold pattern over the eastern U.S., does it have legs, is it going to stick around a while? one question another question the battle developing here between uh, the alaska trough uh into that extends into the eastern pacific and the greenland block or the negative nao and we'll talk about the major great lakes low it's going to move into southeastern canada november 17th 18th 19th and the arctic blast that comes in behind it it looks like we'll have a pretty cold thanksgiving week especially the holiday there might be something on the east coast during the holiday we'll see and then we'll talk about the climate models into december and what and the winter all right, this here represents the uh, temperature anomalies over the past week. You can see that the temperatures have really taken a tumble over the plains of the Midwest and to a lesser degree in New England and the Middle Atlantic states. Uh, the cold did not get down until the southeastern states until this weekend, so that's going to take a couple days for that to show up on the weekly temperature anomalies. All right, this here is the overall actual pattern right now as of Sunday afternoon. Let's call it the market here first. This feature right here, okay. This is not, not a negative NAO. No, this is a thumb ridge, North Atlantic thumb ridge. It has to get to Greenland, folks. That's where it has to get to. That's not what this is. So there are a lot of meteorologists out there that say any sort of ridging in the North Atlantic is a NAO. That's bullshit. Anybody who tells you that simply doesn't know what they're talking about. Okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is the other feature to talk about is um, uh, this uh, trough here on the, on the east, on the off the uh, west coast right here. You can see that, and of course the ridge right here in the Bering Sea. So those are our major players here. We are reinforcing a little trough in the Midwest coming through that's going to reinforce the cool air. Now this is the cold front which comes through tonight into sun, Monday morning on the east coast. High pressure comes in, seasonally cold high. Not, not as cold as what we saw last weekend, but you know this on these maps here from a uh, Euro weather, that purple line represents the 540 thickness line, more or less the snow line. So that's a good indication that it's seasonally cold, not anything too serious. Now this is the for Thursday, and we can see the next reinforcing cold front coming down here. The front comes through Wednesday night into Thursday. The rain falls apart as it crosses the Appalachian Mountains, and another cool area of high pressure comes in. So we, that's what happens on Wednesday night to Thursday. And this is an upper air map, which shows this pattern nicely here. So this is the upper representation of this. Same sort of thing. Again, this is a Wednesday night. This here is the trough. Bringing the cold front through here. Here's our polar vortex here. And there's the next trough this way. And there's our Bering Sea ridge pushing up towards the North Pole, toward driving this direction. So that takes us in close to the weekend. Now, what happens is, again, this piece of energy at the base of the trough right in here gets ejected eastward. And that's what causes the big storm to form in the Midwest and the Great Lakes. Here it is on Saturday, November 18th. You can clearly see the trough is amplifying very nicely with a negative tilt in this direction. Oh, we're beginning to get, here's our North Atlantic Thumb Ridge pushing up towards Greenland, as you can see there. All right, there's our big vortex bringing the cold air in. And here's the ridge still over the Bering Sea. So this storm goes boom, very powerful storm over the Great Lakes. There's no doubt about that. This is the European Ensemble. Again, valid for Saturday evening, the, eight, the 18th. And you can clearly see, look at the negative tilt on this sucker. Very impressive. Here's our polar vortex. Yes, this is the negative NEO here. Now, this is a negative NEO. Yes, that is. Yes, correct. All right, and there's our next trough oh, in the eastern Pacific Ocean. And there's our ridge right here and another one down in this area. So this is what's going to cause the storm to go boom with the negative tilt on it and the block over Greenland. And there you go. Now, this is a classic example right here, folks. Simply because you have an NEO doesn't mean you're going to get an east coast storm. And we can see that here. Here we have a nice negative NEO. And the storm is going through the Great Lakes up towards Montreal. So, and the reason for that is because the West Coast is terrible in terms of getting an East Coast storm. The polar vortex is here, and you can see a huge amount of cold air building up in here. 
there's our Bering Sea Ridge, and there's the trough on the west coast. So that's one of the reasons why. The trough on the west coast is going to counteract the influence of the negative NAL. Now, this is the service map. This is Friday. You can see uh, Friday, the evening, afternoon, evening hours here. We're getting high pressure. Notice the highs here and here. Southwest winds, a lot of warming coming up this way. And then later on, the uh, storm goes boom. You can see the warming ahead of the system. And this is not a surprise. Again, this is the same sort of a pattern. And you can see the warming ahead of the system, like we just showed, coming this way. Notice the buildup of cold air underneath that big vortex again. So let's go back and take a look at that. There it is. Okay, the cold air underneath the vortex. And here's the warm air coming eastward. Bada boom, bada bing. There you go. And then, of course, here's the storm going bonkers. You can see it gets down to 972 millibars. A lot of southwest winds. Saturday is going to be a warm day on the east coast, or mild day, I should say. Let me um, use this marker instead. You can see warm. And then the, here come the howling northwest winds behind it, bringing in the Arctic air with another Arctic high coming down. Well, I don't know, Arctic, but really cold high for mid and late November. And this is just a surface map, nice and clean from Weather Bell. You can see 972 millibars over Lake Huron. It gets up to 966 as it goes up through Montreal. Very impressive looking storm, no doubt about it. So, and you look at the winds here ahead of the system. This is for Saturday afternoon and evening. Look at the winds over the Ohio Valley. See the brown colors here? Now, this is miles per hour, not knots. So the brown colors represent, you know, that's low 60s. 55 to 65 mile winds this whole area and of course that's just for saturday afternoon evening this is saturday night into sunday morning and on the east coast very powerful winds here over new england and the coastal areas of jersey you can see this that's almost 70 mile winds in virginia bright red 50 mile winds pennsylvania 50 and 60 new york state 50 and 60 miles an hour so very impressive winds here so that's going to be something going to be a big story coming up here over the next several days. Behind the system, it pulls the cold air in, like I told you it was going to, with that huge pool of cold air developing up here. It gets pulled southward. This is uh, valid for November 20th. So this is pretty cold uh, going into Thanksgiving week east of the Mississippi River. There's the Mississippi River. So these temperature anomalies, 5, 6, 7 degrees below normal. Now, this takes us to Thanksgiving morning. That's a cold Thanksgiving morning. Gobble, gobble, boys and girls. That's a chilly one. Not the coldest one of all time, but it's cold. East of the Mississippi River. Now, what happens on Thanksgiving itself or that weekend? Well, this is the upper air map, day 10 for the European ensembles. Okay, so let's take a look at some features here. First, yes, this is a negative NAO. Again, yes, it is. No doubt about it. Now, this is here is the trough on the Pacific and here's our ridge now normally if this was not here let's say we had no NAO this trough would cause a ridge like this it'd be a blowtorch so that's what the effect of the NAO the problem is again that um, the NAO acts as a stabilizing agent but the west coast is not good for east coast winter storms you don't have a trough out here you need a ridge here or the jet stream coming southward that's not what we have at all so the Pacific is completely messed up with regard to East Coast winter storms. And now we look at our temperatures. You see the cold air coming southward the day before Thanksgiving. And then um, before this, again, this is the day before Thanksgiving. We see a uh, reinforcing cold front with some rain in the Midwest headed for the East Coast on the uh, 21st and 22nd, right before the holiday itself. Now, if you go further out in time, this takes us to after the end, coming to the end of Thanksgiving, Sunday evening, the 26th, uh, Sunday afternoon, evening. And we can see, notice that for some reason, the European ensemble has now almost wiped out the block over Greenland. Um, is that correct? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. We do see this trough is still here. And look at this essentially zonal flow. So bringing in mild Pacific air. Sure enough, we look at the temperature anomalies. Yeah. It's getting mild. It's the cold air is being used up over the eastern third of the country. Mild temperatures of the Plain states. So we're coming out of Thanksgiving. It's turning kind of mild again. Now, as we go toward, this is another view. This is the, the European ensemble uh, at surface temperatures, and you can see it's quite warm relative to normal. Now, again, Saturday night, Sunday, Thanksgiving weekend, it's still cold in the northeast. But look at the warming building here, which is coming eastward. So. If we look at the 16 to 20 day, again, this, this image right here, this is 16 
to 20 days. So this takes us to the end of the first end of November, the first couple of days of December. Notice the pool of cold air here. And look how warm it is here. And you know, this kind of matches that. So now this is based upon analogs. The top 10, you look at the 11 to 15 day model, the pattern, and you look at all those analogs, the top 10 of them, and you roll it over into the 16 to 20 day. And this is the pattern you get. So this doesn't always work, but it's a useful tool. And you can see in this sort of pattern, a lot of rain here, uh, potentially good rain on the West Coast. So they could use some more rain here and in the Plain States. And again, if you look at the pattern, if we assume this is correct, that's a pretty wet pattern for the West Coast into the Rockies. OK, so let's go forward. And now this is going into uh, the first week of December. Now, here the model is bringing back the European weekly. It apparently wants to bring back the uh, some sort of NAO, so that's interesting. The vortex is still far to the north, but we still have no ridging on the west coast. It's still essentially a flow like this. There's a bit of a weak trough on the east coast, so it's not really warm, but it's not cold. And you can see that with the temperatures. You know, but the Rockies is warm. The Plain States, relative to normal, is warm. East coast, eh, a degree here or there. Now, as we go further into December, now we see a ridge forming on the European weeklies. And this is from last, these European weeklies are from last Thursday, Thursday and Friday. Look at the ridge forming here. Now we're getting some flow this way. Some sort of disturbance in the mid-Atlantic here. There might be a low pressure area in mid-December. That has to be watched for a potential winter storm. And then you can see the temperature anomalies are quite cold in mid-December. Now, let's look at the climate models. This is from, oh, um, uh, from September. So let me write this so you can see it. This is September, OK? And you can see November, December, January. Here's our ridge. Look how warm it is. The only trough is right here. But look at how warm it would be. And that's fine. OK, we knew that's typical La Nina. And this is December, January, February. And again, we see the only negative anomaly is here and a nice big ridge here where it's nice and warm. Very typical weak to moderate La Nina pattern. The thing is, is that when you, uh, when you look at the updated version of this, um, we see something different. This is the updated version. Now we have the trough here. And yes, there's a bit of ridge here and a flat ridge over the southeast, but it's much weaker. And we have some blocking showing up on the climate model there. So maybe that's significant. And then if we look at uh, December, January, February, same sort of pattern, more blocking over northeastern Canada, Greenland. So there is a shift towards a colder pattern. Uh, you know, the, I think what's happening is the climate models are seeing that La Nina is going to be dead by midwinter. And or weakening, and that's going to allow the second half of the winter to really get cranking. And this, if we finally look at the CFS here, uh, this is the new one here. This is recent November 12th, you can see there. And again, our, though the polar vortex is really far to the north, uh, this is represents in December. This is December now, so this, this would probably be a positive Arctic oscillation and a positive NAO. Okay, and there's our trough on the West Coast. This is a fairly mild looking pattern. Now, the European weeklies are significantly colder than this, so we don't know yet about December. But look what happens in January, February. Uh, January, uh, again, this is, we do have, this right here is a um, positive NAO, unfortunately, so we still have that. So that's not good. But we are getting cross polar flow, no doubt about it. So this is a much colder pattern here, a bit of ridge on the West Coast. So this is a step in the right direction. And then in February, well, now February, you actually have a negative Arctic oscillation. The NAO has gone neutral. You can see the ridge here develops um, up into here, which forces the, uh, the Arctic oscillation to go negative, strongly negative. So our vortex comes further south as well. So this is a colder, stormier pattern, according to the CFS. Now, I don't know if it's right or not, but just letting you know that's what the trends are. So we'll see. This is Meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll see you on the website and on the Facebook page.